Hi, it's Professor Davis here. I'd like to look at an application of the normal distribution, how we can solve it. Uh, so let's uh, take a look at this example that I made. It says the ages of Americans who did not visit a healthcare professional in 2010 are normally distributed with a mean age of 41.1 years and a standard deviation of 21.8 years. This is some data I found from the, U the U.S. National Center for Health Statistics. Suppose that for an assessment of the national health care system, an American who did not visit a health care professional in 2010 is chosen at random to complete a survey. In part one, we want to determine the probability that the person is between 20 and 25 years of age, kind of college age if you will, or uh, determine the probability that the person is older than 65. So um, let's, let's get started here with part a, and we'll just kind of go through it step by step. I've kind of broken this down into into several steps so that uh, you know once we break it apart, it's very easy to do. First, we want to identify the population mean mu and the population standard deviation sigma of the distribution. Well, that num those numbers are given here right at the very beginning. Remember, these two numbers, 41.1, that's the parameter for the mean. Standard deviation, 21.8 years. That's another parameter. Those are population those are population measures. So let's go ahead and mark, mark those down. So for the given information, we have a mean, mu, 41.1, and then standard deviation, sigma, 21.8. Part step two, write the desired probability in terms of the normal random variable x. And remember what we were looking for in part uh, A here. We want the probability that the person is between 20 and 25 years of age. So let's go ahead and see how we'd write that. Now remember, we'll write P for probability. X is our normal random variable. And then we put in our endpoints. Here they're 20 and 25. One, one thing I, I think you might want to ask yourself is, you know, I didn't put in less than or equal to P here. I put strictly less than. The thing is, when the uh, random variable is continuous, like the case here for the normal distribution, it doesn't matter if you would join the endpoints or not. In other words, it doesn't matter if you put less than or less than or equal to here. You get exactly the same probability. That's because this is a continuous probability distribution. That makes a big difference for the discrete type, you know, like the binomial type, but that doesn't matter here. So uh, the convention is we'll just use less than right here. Step three, convert the data from x values to z scores using our formula z equals x minus mu over sigma. That number will give us the number of standard deviations each of these x values lie away from the mean. So here we go. So notice the computation here. First what we do is we'll simply write down the probability in terms of the random variable x and then we'll go ahead and do the conversion. Let me go ahead and do the first value here. Remember when I told you the, uh, the two important values here for um, two important rules for using the calculator when you have two terms in the numerator you make sure to enclose the numerator in parentheses and that's what we're doing here and so we see we get the um, number of standard deviations as being negative 0.967 our convention is for these z-scores to round to two decimal places. You'll see why here in a minute. So we'll round that to two decimal places, so that would be negative 0.97. So let's take a look at that now. So we have negative 0.97 once we simplify. If you do the same thing when you plug in 25, you get negative 0.74. So those numbers lie about what? Maybe one, uh, a little bit less than one standard deviation to the left of the mean, and then about three-quarters of a standard deviation to the left of the mean. Now, step four, and this is an important one. Stetch, sketch the desired area on the standard normal curve. Now, I went ahead and did that for you. Now, I knew I used line art, but you know, just do a hand sketch of the normal distribution. One standard deviation away from the mean is right there. We go a little bit to the right of that because we're not quite at one. We're at negative 0.97, and then at 
0.74 is our other one. So notice here we're looking for this narrow strip of area between these two endpoints now. All right. So this our probability is given by this narrow brown strip that I've computed. Now, uh, part five, use table A2 to determine the probability. Now, so here, what we want to do is to take our table A2 that comes in the formula and table sheet. Let me show you that now. Here it is. Now, this is a cumulative distribution table, meaning it gives us the area to the left of a z-score. So what we want to do is take the table value from our right-hand z-score, negative 0.74, find that out, and then subtract off all of this other area that's the table value at z equals negative 0.97. So let's look up those values for negative 0.74 now. What we want to do is to run down the left-hand column of our table till we get to negative 0.9 and then we'll run across till we get to 0 0.07 because our table gives us z-scores accurate to two decimal places and that's why we want to round our z-scores to two decimal places to match this table so we're in this uh, third to last column here so let's just run down till we get to negative 0 0.09 you see it right there and so then we see that the area if we run across the blue stripe here at negative 0 0.09 and then go to 0 0.07 in the column direction we get to the value 0 0.1660 so I went ahead and recorded that and then we need the value at negative 0.97 now let's go back and take a look at that one now using our table negative uh, uh, 0.74 we, oh, I'm sorry, I first did the negative 0.97 and let's go back and do the negative 0.74 and notice it's right here at 0.2296. So notice here I've written both of those values. Negative 0.2296, that's our, that's our rightmost value. Negative, the table value at negative 0.97, that's our leftmost z-score and the difference being 0 0.0636. So now uh, in our next step we want to interpret the solution in terms of the problem situation. So I went ahead and wrote a sentence here. And so it says there is a 6.36 percent chance that a randomly selected American who did not get health care between uh, is between 20 and 25 years of age. So only there's only about a 6 percent chance that if we select an American from a random who didn't go to the doctor last year that that person is between 20 and 25 years old. Kind of a surprisingly small number, I guess, when you think about it. All right, so that's using our table. Now finally, let's verify the solution on our graphing calculator with the normal cumulative distribution function. So notice the format. First we'll put in the two z-scores. I just called them A and B here. <coughs> so we'll put in the first z-score score, then our second z-score, and then the mean and the standard deviation for the standard normal distribution are 0 and 1 respectively, so we'll put in those values. So let's go ahead and use our calculator to do that now. Now we're not going to use the stat menu like we've done in the past, we want to use the distribution menu. So I've uh, got the key history here so that we can follow along. First we hit the second key, and then we hit Let's try one more time here. Well, first we hit the second key, and then we hit the VARS button to get the distribution menu. One more time, that's the second key, and then the VARS button, and that gives us the distribution menu. So let me click that over here, and notice the normal cumulative distribution function is the second one. So I'll just scroll down here, highlight number two, and hit enter. And so that calls up our function, and now we'll put in our first z-score, negative 0.97, put a comma, that's just above the 7, and then negative 0.74, that's our right hand z-score, put another comma, and then, oh by the way, before I go any further, notice I've used this negative sign, not the subtraction sign, I always have to do that when we have a leading negative 
All right, and then we put in our mean and standard deviation for the standard normal distribution, 0 and 1 respectively. Hit enter, and notice we get the answer, 0 0.0636, just like we did when we used table A2. So certainly nothing wrong with, with using your calculator instead of the table to get the probabilities. So uh, that's something you might want to practice. Now let's take a look at Part B. Part B says we want to find the probability that the person is older than 65. Now for Part B I've written the solution in more of a two column format so we can go through it here a little quicker. First uh, we want to identify the mean and standard deviation and we've already stated that the mean is 41.1 standard deviation is 21.8. Write the desired probability in terms of the, uh, the normal random variable x. So that would be the probability that x is greater than 65. Then convert that to a z-score. So let's go ahead and do that. So to do that we get 65 minus the population mean 41.1 close the parentheses and then divide that by 21.8 which is our standard deviation. So we get point, uh, 1.096. Now remember we went around to two decimal places for uh, table A2 so that would be 1.10. So uh, there we see it there in step 3 and now sketch the desired area on the standard normal curve so we know what we lo we're looking for here. Here's one we want just a little bit past that, so we want to we want to find the area of this right tail you see in brown there. That's what we're looking for. So think of how we want to do that. Our table gives us values to the left of a z-score. We want the complement of that. So to get the probability uh, in step five, we want to take one minus the table value at 1.10. We want the complement of what the table value gives us. Let's go ahead and grab our table. Now in this case the z-score is positive so I'm going to move to the next page here for positive z-scores. Now think of what we're doing now. We're, looking, we're going to go down the left hand column until we get to 1.1. There's 1.1 and the next digit is 0 so we're here in the very first column 0 .00. So here's our uh, table value right here 0.8643. So going back to our solution now, here we have 1 minus 0.8643, so we get 0.1357 for the probability. And now let's interpret the solution. And we can say that the probability that a randomly selected American who did not get health care is older than 65 is 0.1357. So notice there, in, in that interpretation, I used uh, the probability value. For part A, I converted the probability to a percentage and did my interpretation that way. Either way is correct. And then finally, let's verify our solution using the graphing calculator. So let me show you that. Again, hit the second key, the VARS button to get the distribution menu, and now we are going to go to uh, option 2 here for the cumulative distribution function. Now think of what we want to do. We want to go from our z-score 1.10 really out to infinity. Now the, the textbook uses 99 to the 99th power. There's no, need, there's no need for that. You don't have to go that many standard deviations to the right of the mean. I'll just put in a thousand. I mean a thousand standard deviations to the right of the mean certainly will give us the right answer. So I use a thousand for, you know, to represent uh, uh, infinity, so to speak, a thousand standard deviations to the right of the mean. If I'm doing it the other way, I would use negative a thousand, a thousand, a thousand standard deviations to the left of the mean. And then again, zero and one for our respective mean and standard deviations. And so there's our solution. 0.135. Now that says 0.1357, doesn't it? When we round that to four decimal places to match our, our table A2. The discrepancy is, remember we did a rounding here 
in the z-score. That's quite all right. You know, don't worry about that. Sometimes there'll be some variation. I account for that when I look at the uh, the test and your and your work and so forth. So um, there it is. There's an application of the normal distribution.